We are treadmills in 220. It's a sordid state of affair, not what we were hoping for. So at the moment there appears to be two major categories, slide mills and motorized treadmills. Let's start with the slide mills. Slide mills work by friction or lake thereof. You put those slippers on your legs and, well, slide along. Personally, it felt awkward to move around in it when I tried it in some VR establishment. As someone once said, Just sliding back and forth, it feels exactly like that. Like, as if a big, you know, giant is holding on to you. Yeah, so picture this, you feel a big, strong man holding you. Now, even if the one I tried was a lame sort of slide mill, most of the video I've seen of people using slide mills show that awkward body position. Upper body wants forward, legs are at the back. It's practically a universal type of awkward walk to any of those slide mill designs. A company called Cybereth seemed to have somewhat addressed this problem with this design, adding an automated incline to wherever you turn. But even with that improvement, it's still a slide mill. However fancy the slide mill design is, whether it's an incline or not, or whether they compensate for biomechanics or not, they all seem to limit your movement in one way or another. You won't be able to sprint like this. Movement is mostly limited to walking, aka sliding, or light jogging. Even jumping tends to be limited, typically to one axis. But at least they're simple enough that maybe you can DI one one and maybe it would at least be better than pushing that button around to advance. Now, let's talk about the motorized omnidirectional treadmills. This is a common theme along those motorized treadmills. See if you can spot it. Uh, and then when I stop, I'm used to imparting acceleration to my body, but that doesn't happen until later. Yes. It's a, it's a work in progress. How far you go back, it's... That's clever. That's that, it's a challenge. Did you catch that? Motor's reaction time is very noticeable in them. Now, here it's slightly less noticeable because it's a smaller design, but if you look closely enough... Yeah. That's why you're unlikely to be able to quickly accelerate or decelerate in those things because those motors just can't react fast enough. Now this guy made a good video about it. It's particularly noticeable when you come to a full stop or start walking. If you accelerate and decelerate slowly enough, I suppose it could feel natural, but again, limitations. Also, I couldn't find a clip of people sprinting or jumping in those kind of treadmills, which makes me question whether they are even rated for that. At least this treadmill, the Omnidac, is large enough to allow you to crawl, but see how it pushes you back? Now my homemade solution also has plenty of flaws. First off, it's obviously not 360, it allows me only to go in linear motion. I can't walk back, it's a sort of a safety feature. And obviously I can't sidestep either. That's part of the reason why I'm getting my ass kicked in games like Mordow. So if I want to turn, I just need to use my mouse or a VR controller in case I'm uh, using VR. And even manual treadmills have acceleration and deceleration issues of their own. Obviously, it's not ideal, but if you're at a constant velocity, just like those other treadmills, it works fine. This is pretty much where we stand these days. Cheaper designs, aka slide mills, create awkward body movement. Expensive motorized design still have acceleration deceleration issues. Oh, and when I say cheap and expensive, that's what I mean. So, even the cheap ones are quite expensive. So, it would seem our engineering of an omnidirectional treadmill is still way behind from where we want it to be. It's a sordid state of affair, as I said. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I tried to do comprehensive enough of a research, uh, but if you think I missed anything, leave me a comment. I uh, would love to hear it.